Good morning again and welcome to the Disciples Prayer in Matthew 6. Yesterday we started looking at the Old Testament background to Jesus' unwavering focus on the Kingdom of God. And in order to get the full thrust of Jesus' teaching, we're stopping to ask, where does this idea come from? Uh, what does it mean? And what are the implications? And I make no apology for slowing up and hovering over this core idea. Yesterday we saw the first direct reference in prophecy, in a prophecy from Nathan. And the second mention is also found in 1 Chronicles, a few chapters later, chapter 29, when David is dying. So his final act was to call an assembly to celebrate the final arrangements and provisions for this temple. And in front of everyone, David prays an epic prayer. And I'm going to put up just one of those verses. It's verse 19. Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendour for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Now, where have we heard that before? Well, it's the basis, of course, for the close of the modern Lord's Prayer. And that's incidental, though, for now, but we will return to it later. But what's it saying? Well, it's affirming that God is the ultimate king over everything in heaven and everything on earth. It's his by right. So make a mental note of this phrase in heaven and on earth and hold that thought for later. We're in slight danger of losing focus on Jesus' words, may your kingdom come. Actually, surprisingly, it wasn't just Jesus who prayed these words, because his contemporaries almost certainly did as well. How do I know? Because it's found in the Jewish Kaddish prayer, may he cause his kingdom to reign. And it was originally written in Aramaic, which is a big clue to when it was written, i.e. Jesus' time. And it persists in synagogues even today. It's actually used as a sort of a, a bookmark, uh, marking different sections of a standard Orthodox synagogue liturgy. So we're asking God to establish his kingdom, his reign, over a still rebellious world that refuses to recognise uh, his kingship, which is tied up with recognising the authenticity and the authority of Messiah, the son of David, and his eternal kingdom. Well, we're inching our way towards what the kingdom of God is and working out what it means more tomorrow. Meantime, I'm leaving you with amusing and I'm cheating today, I admit it, because I'm quoting a phrase that hit me uh, from 1 Chronicles 29. It's not the one that we focused on, but David prays this about these temple provisions. With all my resources, I have provided for the temple of my God all my resources. It strikes me that heaven is the reward for labouring in God's kingdom here on earth. Have we been pouring all our resources into the kingdom? There's plenty of time for rest later. Have a muse. Grace and peace to you and See you tomorrow.